All right, this is Wilson, and Wilson is a puppy. I mean, he's got a lot of puppy uh, behavior problems that are really more related to him being a puppy, but his guardians didn't provide him with a lot of structure. And so he kind of gets really excited about a lot of things. So one of the things I want the guardians to do is stop petting him when he's excited, like when they come home, when it's dinner time, or letting out of the kennel, whatever. Uh, now, in this case, he also is re very reactive when the garage door opener opens. So let's go ahead and have a demonstration. Go ahead and just hit the garage door. There we go. So you can see here. That's what I wanted. I wanted the before. Okay. So um, I'm going to let him sit with them, but I'm going to explain this. Hopefully, you can just film me for this part. Okay. So basically, this is a. This is something that causes him to get worked up. He's hearing the garage door. Clearly, he gets the garage door. Oh. Been better served not to do the before but it's good for tv all right so uh what we're going to do is this is a technique counter sit called counter conditioning it's also associated with um, also including a desensitization technique now when you're doing this you want to what the stimulus is in this case the garage door opening is the stimulus what we want to do is one of your providing a positive reinforcement in this case in, case, in this case the treats. Wilson. Wilson. Here. You want to provide a, a, a basically a positive reinforcer while, while the stimulus is going on. So what we're going to do now, sit. So I'm letting him chew on the treat. I'm kind of pinching it between my thumb and forefinger so he doesn't get it all at once. It's right here, buddy. Sit. Now, when you're doing counter conditioning, you do not have to make the dog sit. I do it as one of my tests. When the dog gets out of the sit, it's its way of saying it's, 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 it's too intense. Now, when you're doing this, this is probably not the best because I did the before, but you see he's working. We want to make sure he's worked up before we do this. All right, so go ahead and uh, close the garage door. So now he's more interested in getting the treat. Well, somewhat distracted. Sit. Sit. Now he's like this because the garage door is associated with people coming home. Now, a little trick, a little dog training. The more you let your dog move around, the more he's going to be. I don't like doing the corrections that I just did. I was hoping to stop. For some dogs, this is why I'm not doing this. Now the dog's nose controls 60% of their brain. So if I can get him sniffing something, he's more interested in this. Now what we're gonna do is, um, I'm gonna have my, uh, yeah, let's go, we'll go ahead and try it again. Um, and when I do this, I usually what I do is I give the dog, uh, get, come up with a code. So every time I say a number that I want you to press the garage door opener. Now we'll see in some garage doors, as soon as you press it a second time, it'll stop. That's ideal. Because what we wanna do is before the tree disappears, stop the stimulus. So I'm going to let him start chewing on it first. I'm going to give him one into his mouth. There we go. I'm going to have another one ready to go. Go ahead and nine. So I don't know if you can hear it uh, through my sweet camera phone, uh, but the, the garage door just closed. He didn't respond. So we're providing, we're substituting one behavior for another giving him these high value treats. Now here's the high value treats before, or is getting the high value treats before the stimulus stops. And as soon as it stops, then the treats stop. So what he, you know, he's excited because he's expecting somebody to come through the door right now. That's why he gets excited with, uh, with the uh, sound of the door. Uh, you can do this for the doorbell, somebody knocking at your door. I had one client where the dog reacted to the sound of Velcro. And so we did this over and over. We're desensitizing him and we're replacing it. Sit. Sit. Now, I don't want to do it every single time I get him a treat because then he starts, oh, the treat means the garage door is about to happen. So I'm getting ready to do it, so I'd be ready to do it. And again, why don't you come up with a code so he doesn't hear now, now. And now becomes like a code itself. It's open right now. Yeah. All right, so uh, go ahead and 11.
Now I kind of ran out of treats, so we would have wanted to stop the garage door. Uh, but the idea is every time he hears the garage door open, he's getting these high value treats. Now we can do things to control the situation. Um, we can do things like um, increasing the distance, increasing the distance between him and the door. We can also, uh, oh, I forgot, that's a better way to do it. There, this is kind of a push-pull technique. It kind of puts the dog a little bit left to center. It usually will calm him down. That's much better, buddy. So basically, uh, we're full of dog. Uh, this is a, it's a good <coughs> relaxing trick. It's not fully working with you as well as I'd like, but it's working pretty good. So basically when you're doing counter conditioning like this, you need to make sure your dog's not reactive. This is what we call sub-threshold. Once he starts barking and reacting, it's not gonna work very well. So we can do this a couple ways. We can do this by increasing the distance between him and the door. In this case, to make sure that he heard it, I have the, I have the guardian leave the door to the garage open. The door, go from the, garage, the door going from the garage, actually let's do this. Uh, from the uh, from the house to the garage, not the garage door that the car goes through. Um, yes, I'm going to give you one of these so you can be quiet while I finish up what we're talking about here. Sit. Sit. All right. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to kind of replace that. Now, my two tests, does the dog stay in a sit? If he gets up out of the sit or he stops eating the treat, the stimulus is too intense. So we can either increase the distance between the dog and the stimulus or do things like control the volume by maybe closing the door. When I do this with a doorbell, sometimes we'll use a pillow and we'll muffle the sound of the doorbell or increase the distance. So the dog can hear it, but it's not quite as intense. If I'm running, that, if I'm at the end of the street and say, I'm going to punch you in the nose, you have your guard up a little bit, but you don't feel particularly threatened. If I'm running at you saying, I'm going to punch you in the nose, it's going to be more intense pretty quickly because the closer I get, the more intense it is. So we want to increase the distance or lower the volume or slow down the speed. I do this with like dogs that are reactive skateboards or stuff like that. So we're creating, I'm more interested in the treat and because I'm so far away from the stimulus, I don't perceive it as a threat. So I can focus on getting the treat. And as, once we can get to the point where the dog can five times in a row at this distance, chew on the treat and ignore the stimulus, then I would take one step closer, put the dog in a sit and practice it again. And you're going to keep on doing that until you get to the point where the dog is starting to look away around the treat or starting to get up. Then we know we're at close to the dog's breaking point. At this point, we stop, the treats go away, and then we remember how, what the distance was. Maybe we're at 25 paces. Well, then tomorrow or the next time we do this, we would go back to 25 paces. And we might go 25, 24, 23, and then he's about ready to stop, so we stop there. The next time we do it, we go at 23, 22, 21, and so on. So we're gradually going to get closer and closer until we have him like in the garage, watching the garage door going up and down, and he's not reacting to it anymore because we've substituted one behavior for another and helped desensitize the excitement because it doesn't mean that somebody's coming in the door. It means I get a treat. Um, now, this is a longer process. You, it's going to take a lot of repetition. Dogs categorize what they learn while they sleep, but they organize it maybe is a better way to put it. So whenever you do an exercise or any training session, you always want to get the dog to sleep in between, in between practice sessions so they kind of will be better at it the next time they do it. So I don't want to have everybody in the family do 15 of these in a row. We would want to do one and then have an hour or so go by, he sleeps, naps a little bit, and then we do it again and so on and so forth. And we're gradually going to roll it out until eventually we're really close to it. Now don't do this all at once. If he does it for the garage door and does it for the back door and does it for the dinging of the microwave and for a bunch of other things, don't try to do them all at once. Just make a list of those things and deprogram one at a time until eventually it gets to the point where the garage door goes up and down and he does not react at all. Or somebody rings the doorbell and he does not react at all. So use I'm gonna to get to your question in a sec. This is way too long for a video. So this is how you can use your dog, uh, use counter conditioning and desensitization to stop your dog from reacting to various stimulus.